yeah good morning everyone of you good morning sir hi good, good morning so good yesterday morning, we were seeing this. yeah good morning yesterday we were seeing this unit 1 qualities of measurement so in this one we have seen the contents various contents which is involved and divided into three different parts then part a we are seeing the meaning of instrument uh, what's the measurement how many types of measurements are there then today we are going to see the functions of an instrument and elements of an instrument various elements and various functions of an instrument which will be performed there so yesterday we were seeing this units also basic units and uh, derived units in this one g1 has asked one doubt so for the on to answer for that one so uh, can you see g1 can you see my screen yes sir so this is a candela one candela is some constant divided by 683 the unit is kg Uh, per meter square per second cube into steradian. Uh, this is the unit for that one. So meaning it's not a direct uh, basic unit. Okay. Okay. Kg meter square. Kg meter square uh, per second cube steradian uh, minus one. So steradian. So this is not a direct unit. so not a basic unit if it is a basic unit only four uh, five different types of basic units are there one is mass length time then temperature and mole okay among this one only the units will be there if you club up kg into meter it is not a basic unit it's a derived unit somewhat it's a derived unit so that's why we can we cannot consider the candela as a basic unit it's a derived unit only okay given is that clear Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so what is the instrument? So, instrument is nothing but a device for determining the value or a quantity, value of a quantity or condition. Okay, we need to determine something using that particular instrument. So, a measuring instrument is simply a device to determine a value or a quantity or a condition of a particular measurable variable. is called as instrument so to perform that measurement operation or measuring operation we need certain uh, instrument for example scale is also one instrument if you if you want to measure a length or breadth of something a rectangle triangle or something like that so uh, the scale itself is a instrument so there are many types of instruments uh, in the industrial scale operations they will be performing many functions they will be having many elements inside that one each element will have to work together so that it will produce something uh, value okay which will be um, taken by some other element and it will be operated based on the previous element like that so what are the various functions which are performed by the instrument so there are five different types of functions which are performed by the instrument one is a transmitting then signaling registering indicating and recording these are the five different types of functions which are performed by the instrument so what is what do you what do you mean by this transmitting type so for example if you see the uh, telephone okay if you see this type of uh, telephone what happens only the amount of information which is uh, going from one place to another place we don't know the amount but we know what is going on due to that transmission okay transmitting the uh, in the transmitting type of instrument which is intended to convey information concerning the measured quantity over some distance to the remote location so distance to distance only the transmitting will happen from one phone to another telephone so that's what only going on not the amount or quantity of uh, uh, some material uh, some matter is going on so the magnitude or the value of the measured quantity may never be known because of the uh, some other purposes so the volume of the quantity or the measured quantity value nothing can be known in the transmitting time only the transmission will takes place transmission lines will be there from one telephone to another telephone the transmissions only will takes place the best example is a telephone the next one is a signaling type of instrument so nearly if you see this type of way uh, way balances okay if you want to measure a 1 kg 1 kg uh, stone will be there in this side and another material will be uh, 1 kg another material will be there but it will show it is higher or lower okay accurately we cannot match this one okay accurately it's very difficult to match that that one so only it will show somewhat higher value or somewhat lower value so this is the way balance or way balance is the best example for signaling type of instrument where 
signaling where the instrument only indicates the general value or range of a value of its measured quantities so weighing scale is some in some grocery shops which is very which will show you too little or too higher of that particular quantity it will show you so the best example for signaling uh, signaling instrument is this one weighing balance then next one is a uh, registering type of instrument so in which the value the variable of the quantity will be measured with respect to some time okay with respect to some time or with respect to some discrete values some discrete incremental values it will be measured like the best example for this registering type of instrument the previous record it will keep with his, uh, with that particular instrument so cash uh, uh, what we say this cash register cash register or some type of uh, water metering pumps will be there uh, some water metering equipments will be there uh, in our overhead tanks and something they will record the discrete increment in the volume of water which is coming in the tank or in the cash register also so the discrete increment of the amount of cash which is received by that particular cash machine will be received as a registering instrument so registering instrument in which the instrument clearly indicates by numbers or any other symbol of discrete increments only discrete increments of some quantity with respect to that particular time or amount of time so that is called registering type of instrument and next one is indicating type of instrument so this indicating type of instrument only will indicate a certain time if you see in the next point of time or next period of time that indication will not be there there is no record of that instrument uh, that particular uh, value at that particular time so for example the best example for this one is war clock in this war clock if you see just now the time will be uh, 12 uh, something like um, 5 6 7 8 12 8 time is if you see after one minute this 12 8 will not be visible only 12 9 12 10 12 15 16 17 18 19, 19 like this will be visible if you if somebody is asked what is the time uh, at that point in time so you cannot tell that one why because there is no record of that particular period of time here so quantity also same in the indicating type of instrument for example temperature is at that point in time temperature is 100 degree centigrade it will show 100 degree centigrade and after some point of time so that will be deviating from that 100 degree centigrade 101 102 103 103 but you cannot know the previous record why because it is not recording it is only indicating you so indicating type of instrument in which an instrument provides some kind of calibrated scale and pointer so this is the calibrated scale entire 360 degrees angle of this dial will be will be called as a calibrated scale and to indicate the particular quantity there will be some pointer so an instrument indicating type of instrument will be having a calibrated scale along with a pointer to indicate the particular measured quantity so the value of the quantity may be read of the scale at any fraction within the limitations of the instrument and the human eye okay using this human eye whatever we are uh, we could able to read here that's its range that's its span okay that uh, range and span we can easily read from that one but the same thing will not be there uh, for next moment of time next point in time it will not be there okay the next one is the recording type of instrument so in this recording type of instrument we can record that one we can keep a record of that particular value at that point in time so recording type of instrument in which an instrument makes a written record okay it will be having a written record of a variable of the uh, particular measured quantity against some other variable usually this other variable will be time okay dx by dt okay dx by dt what is that x can be temperature that x can be pressure that x can be velocity that x can be uh, something uh, uh, volume or something like that so with respect to time usually this variable the change in that particular variable will be given by this recording type of instrument the best example for this recording type of instrument is your digital calculators or scientific calculators it will store uh, the information in this one we can store that one so there are five different types of uh, uh, functions of the instrument is there one is a transmitting type only the transmission the information will be transmitted from one location to the another location no not the amount of information the next one is only signaling so it will show you whether it is a high too high whether it is a too low that is called a signaling type of instrument the next one is a registering type of instrument in this registering type of instrument the discrete increment in the values of that particular measured quantity can be known and it will be registered in the instrument so the best example is this cash machine 
or some uh, water metering uh, meters then indicating type of instrument only the value which can be seen by the human uh, human eye or uh, the particular uh, value of the calibrated chart only in this 360 degrees angle what about the calibration chart is there that only we can see beyond this uh, 12 we cannot see okay this is only the example for time okay 12 hours 12 hours we are uh, measuring the time that's why it is e very easy but when you, whenever you are measuring other quantity means it's very difficult to read the same value within this 360 degrees angle we have to shift for something else instead of this uh, 360 degrees angle or a circular dial something other dials we have to shift for that one so indicating type of instrument only indicate that particular value at that period of time the next one is a recording type of instrument in this recording type of instrument it will keep a record of that uh, particular uh, measured quantity with respect to its uh, some other variable like a period of time dx by dt or dy by dt so x can be or y can be anything it can be uh, it can be the velocity volume uh, temperature pressure anything the incremental values discrete values dx by dt or dy by dt dz by dt like this anything can be recorded using this particular recording type of instrument the best example is a digital calculator or a scientific calculator is the best example so these are the various functions which are performed by an instrument i hope it is clear if you have any doubts you can ask me yes sir it is clear sir clear okay girl side also please try to respond okay sir, and two less ah yes yes jivan sir uh, few people are waiting outside the class sir if you permit them in yes i am locked that uh, meeting okay they That's should be punctual no they should be punctual okay uh, what about the other candidates who are joining exactly at 9:30 ask them to join immediately jivan yes sir. i am locking once again yes sir yes sir It's still 26 members only. The strength of the class is 39. Okay. So I hope the functions of an instrument is clear to you. Then I will be moving the next part, which is the elements of an instrument. so how many different types of elements will be there in the instrument if you uh, conduct a post mortem on this uh, post mortem on this instrument which is a liquid filled mercury in glass thermometer so if you see this one so first one will be first one will be the thermometer bulb will be there in this bulb there will be a mercury uh, which is filled uh, which is filled with a mercury okay this mercury depending on the outside temperature this mercury will be expanded so the expanded mercury will be displacing this bore down tube or a pressure spring we can call so pressure spring or bore down tube will be there uh, as soon as this outside heat has been sensed by that particular primary element which we will be calling this as a thermometer bulb as a primary element why because in this element this is the first part which is in touch with the hot fluid okay or a me measuring medium so that's why we will calling this as a primary element so the bulb inside the bulb there will be a mercury the okay liquid mercury will be filled whenever it reaches receives the heat energy uh, from the outside medium it will be utilizing the heat energy and is it will be expanding volumetrically it will be expanding this expansion will create some deflection in the bore down tube so this bore down tube will be called as a secondary element why because the displacement which is produced by this fluid from the primary element will be utilized by this bore down tube to convert into some other deflection of the some other element like the next element will be the manipulating element so which performs the given operation 
what is the temperature here it will be indicated by this particular it will be uh, without any deflection it will create a uh, performs a given operation that is called a scale character okay whether sometimes this uh, scale will be just deviating like this up down up down up down like this so in order to not to have that type of errors so this scale character will perform a operation so that a pointer will be accurately showing what what is the temperature at this location on a calibrated scale so this is a scale character is a manipulating element and this pointer is a along with this scale is a functioning element so here in the functioning element we could able to read the temperature which is there outside here in the primary element so there are four different types of elements of an instrument so one thing is the primary element so primary element is nothing but here in this example it is a thermometer bulb so it is a part of the instrument that it first utilizes the energy from the measured medium to produce a condition representing the value of the measured variable for example this is the thermometer thermometer will perform a operation of temperature measurement so to measure a temperature what we need this thermometer uh, um, thermometer bulb needs to be inserted into some medium so like for example this is the thermometer so this boy has been inserting the thermometer bulb into his mouth so that he could able to measure its body temperature as soon as the body temperature is high so the mercury which is there inside this bulb will be just rising like this whenever it is rising so this raised uh, raised mercury level or a displacement of a mercury from starting point to the ending point will be operated on a calibrated scale whether you can measure in the degree centigrade or degree fahrenheit you can easily measure due to the displacement which is causing inside the uh, mercury filled glass bulb so the primary element is nothing but which is in which is first utilized the energy coming from the medium or the measured quantity so that is the primary element the example of the primary element is thermometer bulb and next one is the secondary element so secondary element what uh, the secondary element which will convert the condition produced by the primary element so primary element condition is what the displacement of the mercury and secondary element that displacement will be received by this bodon tube which is called a secondary element and it will uh, produce a useful function okay so that instrument can be uh, reading the particular value which is there at this particular bulb so example for this secondary element is a bodon tube or we can say pressure spring type of instrument also we can say so the displacement this bodon tube will displace or will produce some um, uh, convert the fluid displacement so this mercury displacement will be converted into the fluid displacement into a link of the displacement okay this link will be displaced due to the displacement which is produced inside the um, thermometer bulb or a pressure spring or a bodon tube so then the manipulating element so the element performs a given operation and a condition produced by the secondary element is called as a manipulating element for example the bodon tube or this pressure spring will be converting the motion of the pressure spring into the modified into the scale character to correct for non linearity okay if there is a non linearity like a wavering of this pointer so to correct that one is correction will be applied here in the scale character okay the non linearity will be suppressed there and the manipulating element sometimes will be coming before the secondary element okay its position is not constant here so it can be before the secondary element or it can be after the secondary element we cannot define that one accurately then that whatever the displacement which is produced by the bodon tube or is pressure spring will be converted into the displacement of a pointer and this pointer will be operating on the particular scale so this is called as a functioning element pointer plus scale so this pointer due to its deviation from the initial uh, set point so it will be showing you a reading what is the reading of that particular temperature so that's a uh, different types of elements of an instrument so these are the very very important questions long answer questions so what are the functions various functions of an instrument and what are the various elements of an instrument is the very very important question here okay if you have any doubts you can ask me or else i will move to the next uh, topic no sir we can move on to the next topic okay thank you the next topic an important very important long answer is this one characteristics of an instrument so there are uh, two types of characteristics of an instrument one is a static characteristics Uh, with respect to any change in any quantity with respect to time is zero okay there is no uh, uh, this is a independent of time this type of characteristics are independent of time change in any quantity with respect to 
time is a zero. The static characteristics of an instrument are in general. Those must be considered when the instrument is used to measure at a condition not varying with time is called as a static characteristics. And with respect to time, if the quantity is vary, so that is called as a dynamic characteristics. So static characteristics are nothing but the quantities which are varying with respect, not varying with respect to time and dynamic characteristics are nothing but which are varying the quantities which are varying with respect to time is called as a dynamic characteristics. So among the static and dynamic characteristics, two different categories of uh, characteristics are there. One is a desirable characteristics and next one is undesirable characteristics. As the name indicates, desirable means the, the characteristics which we want more and more. If that is that quantities are more and more, the instrument functioning will be proper. If the undesirable quantities are very, very high, so the instrument functioning is not proper. So undesirable means as the name indicates, it is undesirable for the instrument. As far as possible, as much as possible, we need to suppress this undesirable characteristics, whether in the static characteristics or whether in the dynamic characteristics, we need to suppress this undesirable characteristics and the quantity of this desirable quantity uh, characteristics will be, we have to rise. So the static characteristics of an instrument or those must be considered when the instrument is used to measure at conditions not varying with the time is called as a static characteristics. And the dynamic characteristics of an instruments are which, uh, whose quantities which will vary along with the time. Okay, there is no, uh, there is a dependency of time here. There is an independent of time in these quantities. So among the static characteristics and dynamic characteristics, there are two different categories. One is a desirable, another one is a undesirable. So as the name indicates, desirable, we need more and more. Undesirable means we need very, very, very less as much as possible. We need to suppress this undesirable parameters, undesirable characteristics. So among the Static characteristics, the desirable characteristics are accuracy, reproducibility and sensitivity. So among the static characteristics, the undesirable characteristics are static error, dead zone and drift. There are three types of drifts are there. One is a zero drift. Next one is a span drift and third one is a position drift. So I will explain. I will be explaining this in detail. What are all these quantities? So first let me classify this one. So next in the dynamic characteristics, there are two types of uh, characteristics. One is a desirable and undesirable. In the desirable category, the first one will be the speed of response. And next one will be the fidelity. And in the among the dynamic characteristics, the undesirable characteristics are lag and dynamic error. So these are the various characteristics which are there in the instrument. So these characteristics we will, let, we will try to uh, uh, read in detail or try to explain in detail using this one. So first one, uh, let us define a range and span so that the characteristics can be defined very easily. What is range and instrument range and instrument span? Okay, for example, if there is a thermometer, if there is a thermometer whose scale is like this, okay, which can measure the temperature from 0 degree centigrade to some 100 degree centigrade. Okay, what is the range of this thermometer? Can anybody say? Hundred degrees. Hundred degrees Celsius. Hundred. Uh, zero to hundred degrees centigrade is the range. Range means not a highest value. In between this value, zero to hundred, it can be defined. So, for example, this is A, and this is B. Okay, highest uh, uh, temperature which is measured by this thermometer is B, and highest tem uh, lowest temperature which can be measured by this thermometer is A. So, the range of this instrument is from A to B, or from zero degree centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade, any value it can be measured. That is the range. Then span of this thermometer is nothing but B minus A, the highest value of this thermometer, 100 degrees centigrade minus lowest value of this thermometer, that is 0 degrees centigrade. So this is the span is 100 degrees centigrade and the range of this thermometer is 0 to 100 degrees centigrade. For example, same thing if you see in the pressure gauges. Okay, pressure gauges, some dial will be there like this. Okay, to indicate the pressure. Then the lowest pressure which can be measured by this uh, particular uh, pressure gauge is some zero bar. And the highest uh, highest pre pressure which can be measured by this uh, pressure gauge is B is equal to some 55 bar. 
Okay, then what is the span? What is the range of this uh, uh, pressure gauge? Can anybody say pressure gauge? So the lowest is zero bar and highest is fifty five bar. So what is the okay. range of this pressure gauge? Zero to fifty five bar. Zero to fifty five bar. Yes, fifty five bar. If you denote with some A to B means A to B like this, then instrument span is. Fifty-five minus zero bar. Fifty-five minus zero bar is equal to fifty-five bar is the span. So these two quantities are very important whenever we are defining the uh, dynamic or static characteristics of an instrument. So I hope this range and span is clear for the uh, any instrument. Any instrument can be defined in in this way. Okay, is that okay? Shall I move to the next one? Yes, sir. Yeah. Then the first dynamic uh, static characteristics is uh, accuracy. So what is accuracy? We will be defining here. First characteristics is accuracy. So usually this accuracy will be expressed in plus or minus x percentage of instrument span. Instrument span. Okay, at all points of the scale. At all points of a scale. Okay, the accuracy is usually based on the instrument span. However, the many majority of instrumentation will be expressing this accuracy with respect to the range also okay but majority of cases if you see the uh, the domestic thermometer in uh, back of that particular thermometer also accuracy okay uh, accuracy will be written or speed of response will be written or it, um, um, this reproducibility will be written there if you observe that one there will be given something like plus or minus 1 degree centigrade if it is a pressure it will be given plus or minus One bar, something like that. So we have to read. If it is 100 degrees centigrade, we have to read. Plus means we have to read 101 degrees centigrade. Minus means 199 degrees centigrade. Like this, the definition of this accuracy plus or minus x percentage of instrument span is this one: 100, uh, 101, and uh, 99 degrees centigrade. Like this. So accuracy is usually expressed in plus or minus x percentage of instrument span at all points of the scale. so however majority of times the accuracy can be expressed in, with respect to the range of an instrument also so suppose for example so accurately if you see there is some pyrometer okay nowadays it is very popular no pyrometers or handheld guns like this to measure a temperature something handheld guns will be there like this to measure a body temperature okay like this this is a pyrometer okay handheld gun so if this pyrometer is having a temperature measurement range of some 900 degree centigrade to some uh, um, uh, 1800 degree centigrade let's say 1800 degree centigrade then can we define what is the span of this instrument and in terms the uh, uh, the vendor or a manufacturer is specifying that this instrument is having plus or minus 1 percentage uh, that particular accuracy the instrument is having a accuracy of plus or minus 1 percentage so first we need to calculate what is the span of this instrument okay in order to define what is plus or minus 1 percentage so how to calculate a span this is a and this is b span means b minus a so b is 1800 minus 900 so how much this is uh, 99 900 degree centigrade so this is the instrument span then plus or minus 1 percentage of your uh, particular um, uh, accuracy is plus or minus 1 percentage means 1 divided by 100 so that 1 percentage we are converting into the fraction into instrument span instrument span is 1800 minus 900 that is 900 so we can cancel that one that is 9 degree centigrade okay this is this is a degree centigrade 9 degree centigrade is a error positive or negative Okay, plus or minus? No. If it is a positive, it will be plus. If it is a negative, it is a minus nine degree centigrade. So we need to subtract minus nine or plus nine from the instrument reading. Why? Because it is only accurate up to plus or minus one percentage of the span. This one percentage that is that is, uh, doesn't mean that it is one degree centigrade. It uh, uh, before determining what is this one percentage, we have to determine the instrument span. So B minus A. Then using this instrument span. Multiplied by plus or minus x percentage of that particular accuracy, 
we have to calculate. So that one plus or minus one percentage means plus or minus nine degrees centigrade of the reading. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. The next is a reproducibility. I hope so. Yeah, reproducibility. Okay, what is the reproducibility? In the general terms, reproducibility means, for example, uh, if you are consistent in your results. Okay, if you are consistent in your results. For example, you are you are giving a NSM exam now. Okay, some IPC NSM exam now itself you are giving. So if you have genuinely written that exam, next time when you uh, um, when you give the same exam, you will be getting nearly somewhat uh, nearly the same marks, or you will be passing in that exam. If you are not genuinely giving that exam due to the online exams, you are copying like that like that something is happening. So you cannot reproduce the same result once again. In the instrument general sense also, if that instrument is not giving the same reading repeatedly for the long period of time, so that instrument is not at all reproducible instrument. So reproducibility is nothing but the degree of closeness with which we can measure the given re value repeatedly for a long period of time is called as a reproducibility. So it may be specified in terms of units for a given period of time or perfect reproducibility uh, can be meaning of instrument doesn't have any drift. So what is drift? I will be explaining you. So instrument uh, reproducibility is nothing but the degree of closeness of uh, um, with which we can measure a given value repeatedly for a long period of time. For example, at one period of time at one minute. At one minute, if this instrument or pyrometer is reading 100 degrees centigrade OK, or some 800 degrees centigrade at second minute. If there is no external change in the uh, quantities here, the same reading, it needs to be reproduced once again. If you measure the same same uh, condition once again, it has to measure 800 degrees centigrade once one uh, one more time or otherwise at the uh, two minutes time, if it is measuring 900 degrees centigrade without changing anything externally. So that instrument is not at all standing on its own bird. At one minute time, it is giving 800 degrees centigrade. At another minute time, it is giving 900 degrees centigrade. At another minute of time, it is giving 1000 degrees centigrade. So if this is giving like this, so instrument is having some error. OK, if there is a change here, OK, in the medium itself, if, they, if you are adding uh, some heat quantity, some heat quantity, then it is producing 900 degrees centigrade. It is OK, but without anything change, uh, any observable change in this particular quantity, it is giving a reading of something higher than that one or lower than that one. So that instrument doesn't have any reproducibility. It is not standing on its own word. We cannot trust that type of instruments. So that is called a reproducibility. So the reproducibility is nothing but the degree of closeness with which we can measure the given measured value repeatedly for a long period of time is called a reproducibility. So if it is not having any reproducibility or a perfect reproducibility, reproducibility is there. That means there is no drift in the instrument. It is a very accurate instrument. OK, I hope it is clear reproducibility. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. The next quantity is sensitivity. OK, so, so sensitivity is nothing but which will denotes the smallest change in terms of measured variable. Uh, to an instrument easily response, which with the instrument easily respond. Sensitivity means uh, now uh, uh, we can take the example. OK, how sensitive you are if somebody is just scolding you. OK, how fast, how quickly you are responding to that uh, particular scolding. If I am telling how uh, how much late you are coming to the class, why you are coming late to the class, immediately you are responding or somebody will just uh, lag behind. OK, they will not answer anything like that. So that type of instruments are having a lag. If you are producing something externally, if you are adding something here in uh, heat, you are adding. So how quickly that heat is reproduced as a temperature here. So that is the sensitivity of an instrument. So sensitivity denotes the smallest change in value of a measured variable to which an instrument responds. If you are changing one degree centigrade here, so that has to be reflected in this thermometer here, one degree centigrade. At one point in time, if it is showing 100 degrees centigrade, then you are adding some heat quantity so that this medium has to be raised one degree centigrade means at next moment of time it has to show 101 degree centigrade. That means the instrument is having a high sensitivity. Otherwise it is still if you are adding this much heat one degree centigrade amount of heat you are adding, but still it is showing 100 degree centigrade means so instrument doesn't respond quickly. 
the sensitivity of your instrument is very 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 low especially in the domestic purpose it is not uh, that much important but for the industrial purpose this sensitivity is very very important okay if some operator is noticing that only the uh, instrument reading is 100 degrees centigrade still he is adding more and more more and more heat energy there may be a chance there might be a chance that that particular reactor or the particular vessel or particular heat exchanger will be blasting due to the inaccurate uh, heat balance inside that particular reactor or heater or whatever it may be so the accuracy sensitivity reproducibility will be playing a major role very very major role in the uh, industrial operations okay Accur the sensitivity is nothing but how uh, how this instrument responds to a smallest change in the measured variable okay is called as a sensitivity i hope it is also clear the sensitivity yes sir the next are the undesirable variables so undesirable variables are uh, three variables are there one is a static error then z zone and the drift okay what is the static error z zone and drift we will be seeing undesirable okay this undesirable means as the name indicates we don't desire this type of variables okay as much as possible we need to suppress this type of variables for the instrument uh, uh, better of the instrument so first one will be the static error so what is the static error the static error of an instrument is nothing but the difference between the true value of a quantity not changing with time and the value indicated by the instrument for example if there is a hot water okay bucket full of hot water you are immersing or inserting some thermometer inside this particular hot water okay, there is a scale for this one okay some 30 degrees centigrade 40 50 60 degrees centigrade is there okay now if this instrument is having some error okay here heater some heater you are putting inside okay this is a heater okay the static error is nothing but for example if you are heating this particular water inside this uh, bucket so if the uh, heater is supplying some quantity of heat q quantity of heat so that its temperature can be raised to some 40 degrees centigrade okay 40 degrees centigrade uh, according to our calculation of heat balance calculation from the heater but in the temperature in this particular thermometer is only it is reading 30 degrees centigrade okay instrument reading the static error is nothing but the difference between the true value of a quantity true value of a quantity is nothing but 40 degrees centigrade this is a true value why because in the heat balance equations we have estimated that the from the heater this water should receive 40 degree centigrade temperature or that much quantity of heat we are adding to this particular water but instead of reading the 40 degree centigrade in the instrument this particular thermometer so this thermometer is only showing this 30 degree centigrade that is this is instrument reading thermometer or nothing but the instrument here okay then static error is nothing but okay true value okay, difference true value minus instrument reading so here the true value of the instrument is 40 degree centigrade minus instrument reading showing is 30 degree centigrade is this 30 degree centigrade means 10 degree centigrade is the static error of that particular instrument is there so static error is nothing but the difference between the true value of an instrument uh, true value of a quantity minus instrument reading is called as a static error usually this static error will be specified plus or minus x uh, units okay plus or minus x units like first for example it is plus or minus 10 degree centigrade units this degree centigrade is nothing but units so this is the quantity of that particular measured quantity so plus or minus 10 degree centigrade is the error of this uh, particular thermometer is called as a static error so if there is a static error okay if there is a static error so what to do this instrument we have to throw outside or we can uh, make some correction for this one yes absolutely we can make some correction to that one so that its static error can be suppressed okay this instrument can be used for a long period of time by making some correction 
okay if uh, if there is a static error or something errors in the instrument we need to correct that one otherwise we have to throw that one so if you throw every instrument like this every instrument will have some error every instrument if we are not liking that one we are throwing miss the wastage will be piled up so we have to correct them so how to correct them so from this particular uh, equation we can write that true value plus static error so this one error is equal to instrument reading so instrument reading so if for example if the, for a positive uh, static error the instrument will be reading more than the value okay if this is a positive static error if it has to show a 40 degrees indicates for example this is a 30 degrees indicates it is showing and 40 degrees indicates the accurate accurately it has to show if this is having a positive static error the instrument will be showing you 50 degrees indicates why because this is plus 10 degrees indicates if it instrument is having a negative static error so it has to show show the 10 degree centigrade lower that is 30 degree centigrade minus 10 degree centigrade so this is called as a positive static error so this instrument reading is called as a negative static error so for this type of uh, uh, instruments which are showing the static error first we need to calculate whether that instrument is showing a positive static error or that instrument is showing a negative static error if it is showing a positive static error one type of correction or positive correction we have to uh, apply if it is showing a uh, positive static error we need to apply a negative static error that static correction so that is how to apply that static correction okay static correction is nothing but okay uh, true value of an instrument is equal to instrument reading reading plus static correction if it is showing a negative static error we have to apply a positive static correction plus static static correction okay positive static if it is showing a negative static error means this one minus 10 degrees centigrade lower it is reading so you have to apply a positive static correction means 10 degrees centigrade you have to add so that instrument can be uh, reading a true value so this is a true value this is a negative value this is a positive value okay if it is showing a negative value to you so you have to apply a plus static correction if it is showing a positive value to you you have to apply a negative static correction for that one so if you uh, compare this equations okay uh, for example so true okay yeah true value plus static error is equal to this one instrument reading for example this is the equation 1 and next is this one equation 2 if you perform a operation equation 1 minus 2 so that will be resulting you with a static correction is equal to static error so meaning if you are getting a static error of 10 degree centigrade you have to apply a 10 degree centigrade static correction whether it is a uh, positive error is a negative then you have to add a positive static error if it is, error is a positive static correction you have to subtract 10 degree centigrade or apply negative static correction that's the meaning of this static correction so after correcting that particular instrument we can use that instrument for a long period of time otherwise we have to throw that instrument inevitably is that clear what is the static error yes sir yes sir <coughs> sir but i have doubt sir yes yes please sir uh, when we already realize that there is a static error in the instrument what we use yes sir. why don't we tune the uh, error causing part of the instrument rather than making correction in the calculation itself not calculation instrument calibration correction this is this is not in the uh, calculations okay this instrument needs to be corrected okay it is showing some uh, error in that one so instrument calibration itself we are uh, correcting that one we are not adding any value here 
okay you uh, so directly we are dealing with the in, uh, in, uh, inside part of the uh, instrument ah uh, inside part of the instrument yes yes for example uh, uh, we can take the uh, example of this bike uh, uh, shock absorbers have you seen the okay. bike the shock absorbers yes sir if it is not absorbing the shock that much heavily if you carry that to the mechanic they will correct that one that uh, yeah. what we say that frictions everything they will yeah, be yeah, yeah. they will change the everything in shape similarly here also instrument has to be corrected it uh, static error doesn't mean static correction that is mean that after obtaining a reading we have to add or we have to subtract we are pro uh, <clears throat> proposing some way to the instrument so that it will be correcting we are diagnosing that instrument okay That's so optimizing the performance of the instrument also uh, inst comes into them yes 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 okay you are making a correction inside the instrument not the readings of the instrument okay yes sir, yes, sir. clear sir Okay, the next uh, point is this dead zone. Okay, before dead zone, it is good to go for the uh, drift. Okay, uh, after drift only, it will be easy to understand the dead zone. So first, let us uh, give the explanation for drift. Okay, there are three types of drift. Further, we can divide this three types of drift. One is a zero drift. Next one is uh, this one span drift. and third one is a position drift finally we will i will explain you the dead zone okay first we will see what is a drift okay so in the drift it is nothing but instrument doesn't show the same correct value because of the deformation of the instrument that is the changes of the values during the calibration over a long period of time for example if it this is a clock dial the small pointer and the large pointer will be there uh, 12 something uh, like uh, 5 10 15 20 25 30 something like that uh, like that this uh, dial will be there so in this dial drift is nothing but so instead of this is 12 10 okay this time is uh, for example let us say this is 12 10 am or pm uh, it is no, uh, nothing so if that instrument is having a drift okay the true value of that instrument is for example let us say 12 o'clock but instead of showing this 12 o'clock it will show 12 10 so how it is showing that 12 10 so for example if you consider the graph okay this is some uh, output this is some input okay here uh, to move this particular small pointer and la, uh, big pointer so this is a small pointer and this is a big pointer so to d to move this pointers okay accurately with respect to the time what it has to supply we are giving some battery means some energy we are giving so this battery is accurately getting consumed and it is producing some deflection so that this pointer can be moving from its initial position so that's what the conversion mechanism the displacement conversion is going on so the same thing if this if this clock inside the machine will be there inside the clock some machine will be there so that will be maintaining the displacement or energy from the battery energy from the battery is converting into the displacement of this pointers okay for example if this battery is giving the energy of some 1 uh, watt let us say for example 1 watt energy for 1 watt energy the displacement needs to be uh, uh, some 2 uh, to 3 points okay or 2 to 3 points or 4 points it has to displace but for 1 watt uh, energy which is consuming by that particular uh, machine instead of moving the 2 to 3 or 4 points it will move 5 points or it will move only 1 point like this so because of this the error in the reading will be there so that is called as a drift okay then what is a zero drift for example so what is the input here input is 1 kilowatt or 1 watt of your energy you are giving a input okay since this is a 45 degrees diagonal so what is the reading here if this is a 1 what is reading here can anybody say if it is a 45 degrees diagonal
I hope you understand the diagonal meaning. Okay, if this is a square box. Okay, remember it's a square box. Okay, if you are joining the end to end nodal point, these two nodal points. So this is called as a 45 degrees diagonal. So among this one, this is the input and this is the output. Okay, now can anybody say what is the reading? If this re input reading is some uh, three. So can anybody say what is the reading in the y axis? X reading is X axis input reading is three. If it is crossing through this diagonal, what is the reading in the output? It will also be three, sir. It will also be three. Why? Because it is a, a 45 degrees, degrees diagonal. diagonal. 45 degrees diagonal. So ideally, so this 45 degrees diagonal. Okay, this is the ideal reading, ideal instrument reading or ideal values. If it is one, it is also one. If this is two, it is also two. If it is three, it is also three. Okay, for one watt of energy we are applying to the machine or a clock. So it has to produce only one output. Okay, that is one point output. But uh, if you are applying it to uh, watts of energy, it has to produce two watts of output if it is a ideal value condition. But instead of producing this type of ideal result, instrument usually produce the result of like this because of the high hysteresis. OK, now can anybody say what is the reading here? For example, here is a 2.5 reading. If you expand this to the non ideal values, so here to here, what is the reading? Can anybody say? It is a 2.5 or more than that one or less than that one. <coughs> y axis will be more than X axis. Sir. More than X axis. Why? Because it is above the diagonal. Yes. So it will be something like uh, 3. For example, let us say this is some nearly 3, 2.8 or something like that. OK, then if you uh, observe at this peak, if the value is 1.5, then the corresponding Y axis value will be less than or greater than here. This is the peak. So it will be less than less than if it is 1.5, it will be less than uh, something like 0.5 like this. Why? Because this is the peak which is below the diagonal. This is the peak which is above the diagonal. So this is the high hysteresis loop which will be produced by the instrument. Instead of giving accurate result for one point, the output uh, input output relation will be will not be that much linear. If it is linear, it should produce the ideal values. If it is not linear, it will produce something different value, whether it's a higher value or a lower value. So zero drift is nothing but so instrument output is zero. OK, then it will be producing one as the uh, uh, instrument input is a zero. It will produce you uh, the reading as one in the output. Meaning without giving anything input, you are getting a result from the instrument. So that type of instrument is automatically uh, called as a error type error instruments. Uh, in some grocery shops, you might have noticed without any uh, anything, uh, um, any quantity of material which is there in the weigh balance. Sometimes it will be reading the more value. OK, have you observed that one? Sometimes it will be uh, reading the negative value. Yes, sir. Sometimes it will be negative value. Yes. We are not giving any input. There is no quantity on that one, but they are reading the error values. OK, minus or positive values. So that may be a good for that. If it is a positive, that may be good for the grocery vendor, but it is a loss for the customer. So similarly, the same thing. Zero drift is nothing but instrument is uh, we are giving zero input to the instrument, but it will be giving some positive value or some error value to the uh, output. So that is uh, not desirable. So that's why drift is undesirable. So among the drift, first one is a zero drift. Zero drift is nothing but if you are giving a value of zero as an input, so the instrument will be giving a corresponding output value of higher than that input. So that is not at all desirable. So the zero drift. So the whole instrument calibration may gradually shift by the same amount. So this instrument reading may gradually shift by the same amount. The next one is a span drift. OK, then span drift. What is a span drift? Once again, same uh, graph I am taking. So this is the linearity.
Mm, okay, like uh, okay. So, for example, this is an input value. Input value from A to B. If this is a input value from <coughs> A to B, the whole instrument span, as the name indicates, span drift. Whole instrument span. What happens uh, if you are giving a value of some uh, one? Okay. For example, if this is a 45 degrees diagonal, this is the ideal value. This is a negative deviation. This is a positive deviation. Okay. Then if it is a one, and since this is a 45 degrees diagonal, it will be reading as a one. But if it is a one, you are projecting this as a values, which are the negative values. Here we cannot say it is one. It is less than one. If you are projecting the same value for the positive deviation here, it will be more than one for the whole instrument range. Okay, for an instrument range from A to A to B location, all the values will be deviating somewhat, uh, something more than that one. For example, if your uh, true value, okay, true value of a clock or true value at this point in time is some uh, 12, 12 o'clock. So instead of showing 12 o'clock, it will show 12, 10. If your uh, time at some other period of time is uh, some 12.10, it is a true value. But instead of 12.10, it will show you some 12.15 or 12.20 like this. So whole instrument will have an error. Okay, whole instrument will not show you that particular uh, uh, true value of a time. Okay, if it is 12.10, it will show you 12.15. If it is 12.15, uh, uh, it will show you 12.20. Okay, for whole instrument span, whole instrument span, the error will be there not at the single location. Here the zero, zero thing means there is no input, but it is giving a output here. But here, whatever the reading, true reading is there, it will not show. Whole instrument uh, will be having some errors. Like instead of 12, it will show 1210. Instead of 1210, it will show 1215. Instead of one, it will show 110. Instead of 110, it will show 115. Instead of two, it will show 210. Instead of uh, uh, 210, it will show 215. That's a span rate. Whole span will be uh, corrupted. Okay, whole span of that particular instrument will be corrupted. We need to correct that one using the pointer. For example, if it is at 12 o'clock, it is showing 12.10 means this big pointer. Okay, big pointer needs to be shifted to the pointer here. But another moment of time, it will be once again uh, deviating from its ideal point in time. So that means. So usually uh, this. Uh, uh, the, for the example of for this zero drift is a speedometer. Speedometer or we can say the clock also, we can say the example and span drift also, we can take the same thing, clock or speedometer as an example. Why? Because usually this is the indicating type of elements, indicating type of instruments. So in this, uh, in this type of instruments, it will be very, very high. This type of drifts will be very, very high. Then the last one is a portion drift. In the portion drift, what happens? So this one, okay, 12 o'clock and this is a 12.10. Okay, this is a 12 o'clock, 12.10. So accurately the instrument is reading a 12.10 time. So if it is having a portion error at this period of time, at this uh, location of 10, suddenly this big pointer will have a slippage. Okay, it will slip to, uh, to the bottom or slip to the top like this. Okay, some slippage will be there. So it will not, this pointer will not be standing at uh, point 10. Why? Because here at the 10 location, it that uh, big pointer is having a uh, portion drift. Okay, it will show you 12.15 time. Okay, next moment of time, your accurate time is 12.15. It will show you 12.15. Only portion drift is nothing, but at one point in time, the instrument is subjected to high wear and tear. Because of this one, it is not withstanding at that particular 10 moments. For example, in the cell phone, okay, keyboard type of cell phone, not the smartphone or smartphone also we can take like this. Buttons will be there, no? Okay, these buttons will be there. So if you are using this uh, uh, nine button, okay, nine number of buttons many, many, many times. So it will be subjected to high stress. 
at some point or point in time what happens you will not using this 128 uh, 028 okay 028 digits not very high you are using but you are using nine number very high suddenly there is a drift there will be a drift at nine location okay this button will be spoiled nine button will be spoiled so that is called as a uh, portion drift only one portion will be spoiled out not every portion but span drift every portion will be spoiled out so that is called as a drift is that clear yes sir but have no doubt sir yes 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 please sir uh, in the second type of drift sir okay that is span drift yeah yeah the third in the span drift i yes. have a doubt sir so yes, yes. from uh, from the middle value that is uh, what do you say uh, correct uh, uh, showing value is there now sir right from the origin that is 45 degree angle yes yes we will be having either plus 1 or minus 1 uh, deviation now sir yes 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 this deviation will be constant to uh, all over the machine sir or only at one point no 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 all over the machine all over the machine all over the calibration Okay, okay. okay. For example, so, it is a dial. So every portion, every portion at ten location, fifteen location, twenty location, thirty location, every three sixty degrees angle will have a some error. Okay. It need not to be constant. Only ten minutes it will deviate. Twenty minutes it will deviate. It need not to be constant. Okay. Okay. At this location, it will be five minutes only error. At this location, maybe ten minutes error. At the, some other location, it may be zero error. We cannot say that one, not accurately. Okay. Okay. So the error also is not constant. It also keeps not changing. Not constant. Not constant. Keep changing. The single machine. Okay. Yes. 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 Just it, sir. That's it. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. Okay. Some uh, another person has unmuted. Any doubts? Okay. Uh, shall I continue? Yes, sir. Okay. then next dead. is i think yeah dead zone yeah uh okay once again i'm drawing the same thing input output okay input output so for example this dead zone is nothing but it is the largest range of values of a measured variable to which the instrument does not respond is called as a dead zone or this is sometimes called as a dead spot or hysteresis we can call that so dead zone usually occurs with friction in an indicating or recording type of instrument for example if you are giving a input 1 okay so it will show you a output 0 if you are giving a input 2 it will show you once again the output 0 if you are giving the uh, next reading 3 it will once again show the reading as 0 if you are giving a input 4 then only uh, the largest value at which the instrument suddenly responds so it will give you some higher value like this okay this uh, this all is the 1 2 3 4 whatever the inputs we are giving that all consider as a dead zone so that type of instruments are not at all useful for us so usually this instruments uh, this type of dead zones will be produced by the in instrument like indicating or recording type of instrument like a wall clock okay like this um, what we say uh, recording type of uh, instrument this uh, example yeah this calculators everything will say uh, will have this type of dead zones very high so dead zone is nothing but for one input so the output will be zero for another input the output will be zero until it the instrument responds that will be reaching a maximum value so the dead zone is uh, dead zone is nothing but the instrument will not respond dynamically so it is the largest range of values of a measured variable to which the instrument does not responds and sometimes the dead zone is also called as a dead spot or dead hysteresis or hysteresis we can call so dead zone usually occurs with the friction in the indicating or recording type of instrument okay this is called dead zone i hope it is clear yes sir yeah so these are the static characteristics okay the static characteristics one is a desirable which is accuracy needs to be high and reproducibility it needs to be high and sensitivity needs to be high and undesirable characteristics like a static error it needs to be very low 
dead zone it needs to be very low and drift or uh, uh, all the forms of drift zero span or position anything needs to be as much as low possible the next is a dynamic characteristics so in the dynamic characteristics there are further two divisions one is a desirable another one is a undesirable so first one desirable is the uh, first of all what is a dynamic uh, characteristics means instrument usually rarely responds to the uh, instantaneous changes which is occurring in the surrounding environment for example hot water bath is there okay you are uh, giving some hot water bath you are going to take a uh, bath in the winter season by just immersing some heater to it okay some heater is there and you are plugging this to some plug point and you are measuring the temperature you are inserting a thermometer and measuring the temperature okay this thermometer for example if you are supplying a q quantity of heat so that q quantity of heat is equal to 1 degree centigrade rise in the temperature so how quickly the instrument is responding this thermometer is responding for example initial period of time if this water is having a temperature of 30 degree centigrade you are supplying 1 degree centigrade amount of heat to this particular uh, water through the heater that instrument has to read 31 degree centigrade but whether it, uh, that instantaneous change to that instantaneous change this instrument is responding or not instrument is instrument means here it is a thermometer so this instrument is responding to that quick changes or not that 1 degree centigrade rise in the temperature or not the, that is our main uh, operating criteria so whether that instrument is having some sluggishness some lag or some slowness it is having okay to characterize that slowness sluggishness, sluggishness or uh, lags and everything so we need to estimate the dynamic characteristics of the uh, of the instrument is very very important together with the static uh, characteristics the dynamic characteristics is also very 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 important why because it will show the sensitivity it will show the speed of response it will show the fidelity of the uh, particular instrument it will show how much lag the instrument is containing so that's the called uh, dynamic characteristics so among the dynamic characteristics the first one will be uh, further these are divided into two types desirable and undesirable okay desirable among desirable first one is a speed of response okay what is the speed of response so it is the rapidity with which an instrument respond to the changes in the measured quantity for example in the same example if 1 degree centigrade uh, rise in the temperature is supplied by this heater but the instrument is not at all responding to this 1 degree centigrade rise still it is showing 30 degree centigrade means its speed of response is very 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 low if it is quickly responding to this uh, uh, 31 degree centigrade 1 degree centigrade addition immediately so that is having a speed of response is very very high so it is the rapidity with which an instrument responds to changes in the measured quantity for any successful and accurate measurement instantaneous speed of response of an instrument must be very very high as the name indicate the speed of response needs to be very high that's why it is categorized under desirable characteristics the next one is the fidelity so it is a degree to which an instrument indicate the changes in measured variable without dynamic error okay there we have studied the uh, static error here the dynamic error also we will study nothing difference much difference static error means without any uh, time variable okay not dependent on time static error means not time dependent dynamic error means nothing but time uh, that is time independent this is time dependent that's it okay static error uh, dynamic error so the degree to which an instrument indicates the changes in measured uh, measured value or measured variable without any dynamic error is called as a fidelity now we will be seeing what is dynamic error okay what is lag and everything in the undesirable quantities then once again i will be explaining the speed of response and fidelity once again so the undesirable characteristics in the dynamic characteristics are lag as the name indicates we know that one so if some person in the class is not at all responding quickly so that person is having a lag in the case of instrument is also if for the quick changes or instantaneous changes which is taking place in the surrounding to that uh, changes if that instrument is not responding so that instrument is clearly having a lag 
So the measuring lag is nothing but a retardation or delay in the response of an instrument to changes in the measured quantity. So the lag should be very, very, very low in the instrument as far as possible. If this is not low, so uh, if we are changing the quantity of heat, but instead of responding to the changes in the temperature, so it will show you the same temperature. Then in the industrial scale, the blast will be happen, the inaccurate results will be happen, contamination will be happening due to this lag. So the measuring measuring lag is nothing but a retardation or delay in the response of an instrument to changes in the measured quantities. So usually this lag should be very, very, very low. So the next one will be this one dynamic error. So it is same as the static error, but only this is dependent on time. But static error is independent of time. OK, so static this dynamic error is nothing but the difference between the true value of an quantity changing with time and the value indicated by the instrument. So in the previous we have seen. So OK, this is a true value 40 degrees centigrade is a true value. So instead of showing the 40 degrees centigrade, it will show the negative uh, dynamic. If it is having a nine dynamic error, it will show you a negative. Uh, um, what say uh, negative stat dynamic error? OK, it will show 30 degrees centigrade with respect to time at one minute. This is 40 degrees centigrade at uh, other time at two minutes. It will show below or above this uh, 30 degrees centigrade. So this is the instrument reading. And furthermore, it will show 50 degrees centigrade if it is having a positive dynamic error. So that is also a positive instrument reading. But one thing the difference between the static and dynamic is the static is the independent of time and dynamic errors are dependent on time. That's the only difference there. So if you see, we can write dynamic error is equal to true value minus instrument reading. OK, true value here. This values are function of time. But similarly, when you compare this static error also, I'm writing once again. True value. Minus. Instrument. Reading, but this true values are not function of time or independent of time. That's the only difference between static and dynamic errors. So similarly, the static error and static error, we are applying a static correction equal amount of static error like this. Here also dynamic error to correct that one. We have to apply a dynamic correction here. That's the only difference. Uh, rest all is the same thing. So once again, in the dynamic characteristics, there are two types of dynamic characteristics. One is a desirable under the desirable. The speed of response is the first one which needs to be high. How quickly the instrument is responding to the changes in the surrounding is called as a speed of response. Then next one is the fidelity. So the degree to which an instrument indicates the changes in the measured variable without any dynamic error is called as a fidelity. The lag needs to be very low. The lag is nothing but a retardation or delay in the response of the instrument to the instantaneous change in the output is called as a input is called as a lag. Then dynamic error is nothing but true reading, uh, true value of a instrument reading changing with a time minus uh, instrument reading is called as a dynamic error. So that's the summary of this dynamic and static uh, characteristics. I hope it is clear. Yes, sir. It is clear. Yes, sir. It is clear, sir. Okay, only G1 is responding. Nobody else is responding. Okay. Yes, yes. Sir, once again, you explain fidelity, sir. Explain? Fidelity. Fidelity. Okay, yes. yeah. Okay, fidelity is nothing but it is a degree to which an instrument indicates the changes in the measured, va measured variable without dynamic error. Meaning, for example, in the fidelity, if your true reading is 100 degrees centigrade, so how close 
how close this 100 degree centigrade will be uh, measured easily. OK, this is a measured value. This is a true reading. OK, true reading is 100 degree centigrade. Measured value will be performed by the instrument. OK, if the if the instrument is having a uh, what we say this. Uh, um, static dynamic error, dynamic error. What happens? This true reading or a measured reading will show you plus uh, one degree centigrade dynamic error. So that is it will be showing one not one degree centigrade with the addition of that particular dynamic error. So fidelity is nothing but the true instrument reading without any dynamic error. So we have to cancel this dynamic error. If the instrument is having a not a dynamic error, then it will show you a true 100 degree centigrade. Otherwise, it will add you a plus or minus 1 degree centigrade. So that type of instrument is having a lag. That type of instrument is having a low speed of response. Is that OK? Yes, sir. OK, then next topic will be the thermometers. Yeah, so next we are seeing so until now uh, take two minutes of rest. OK, try to think if some doubts are there in this particular thing. OK, try to ask. And next we'll move to the part two quickly if you don't have any doubts. Yes, rule number seven. You want to tell something? No, sir. No. OK, then I hope there are no doubts in this one. So we'll move to the next topic, which are thermometers. Yes, so part two will be this uh, expand thermometers. So there are three types of thermometers. All these are the expansion type of thermometers. So first one is a liquid expansion thermometer. So the uh, liquid expansion thermometer means mercury in glass thermometer will be the example for that one. The next one is a solid expansion thermometer. In this one, the best example is a bimetallic thermometer. And next one is a vapor or gas expansion thermometer. That is the example of this pressure spring thermometer that we will see in detail one by one. So before that one, the major role of thermometer is to estimate the temperatures. So without uh, the units of the temperature, 
there is no meaning for that quantity when you specifying something 100 degree 100 degree 200 degree 300 degree without that degree if the degree is having some c some k or some f or r then only that will carry some weightage for that particular quantity no matter how big the quantity is 2000 3000 4000 5000 okay without any units for that one there is no meaning of that particular quantity so to define the common temperatures uh, to define the temperature there are many common temperature scales will be there the first one will be the degree fahrenheit scale and degree centigrade scale and kelvin scale rankine scale and raimur scale will be there these are the five different scales uh, which are there to uh, estimate the temperature or to find out the temperature or report the temperature the first one if you see the absolute zero absolute zero means with respect to kelvin if the kelvin degree centigrade scale is saying it is the absolute zero means zero degree kelvin with respect to absolute zero it has been defined the next one is the ice point as we know that ice point is nothing but the temperature at which the ice will be formed from the water is called as a ice point okay that is a zero degree centigrade ice point and the steam point the temperature at which the uh, vaporization will takes place the water vaporization will take place is called as a steam point that is a 100 degree centigrade so depending on that one the correction factors will be applied for each temperature scale so for the kelvin scale foreign heat scale and rankine scale raimur scale these are the various absolute zero with respect to kelvin in the foreign heat scale is minus 459.7 and absolute zero either as in the scale of degree centigrade is minus 273.2 and absolute zero in terms of rankine is zero degree rankine and absolute zero in terms of degree raimur is a minus 218.5 uh, degree Raimur. The next absolute uh, ice point for the degree Fahrenheit scale is 32 degree Fahrenheit, and ice point for degree centigrade is 0 degree centigrade, and ice point in terms of Kelvin is 273.2, and ice point for the degree Rankine is 491.7, and ice point for this degree Raimur is 0 degree Raimur, and the steam point for the degree Fahrenheit scale is 212, and this uh, degree centigrade is 100. And Kelvin is 373.2. This Rankine scale is 671.7. And Raimur scale is 80 degrees. So these are the various temperature scales which are divided in between the ice point and steam point. And this will be accurately, uh, uh, linearly, it will be uh, making a divisions in between them. Then only a thermometer will be prepared. So these are the five different scales which are available. So for example, let us see this degree for an heat scale which is the first uh, scale. So this was introduced around uh, 16th century, uh, I think uh, 1665 and is mostly used in every English speaking countries. So this scale ascends zero degree foreign heat. OK, zero degree foreign heat to the lowest temperature of certain salts and ice mixtures. OK, 32 degree foreign heat as the ice point and the steam point is nearly 212 uh, degree foreign heat. And the formula to convert the degree centigrade to degree foreign heat is degree centigrade divided by 100 is equal to degree foreign heat minus 32 by 180 is called is the conversion formula for this degree centigrade to degree foreign heat. And next one is a degree centigrade scale. So it was introduced around uh, in 1740 and is commonly used in many European countries, which is very popularly known as Celsius scale. The scale has a zero degree centigrade for the ice point and 100 degree centigrade for the steam point and degree Kelvin scale. It is proposed by the Lord Kelvin. So it is also known as degree centigrade absolute scale. OK, degree Kelvin is also known as degree centigrade absolute scale. It is much used in many literature, scientific and technical literature. The Kelvin scale is very much used for the SI unit system. Also, Kelvin is the basis for the temperature measurement. The scale assigns the ice point as 273.2 and the steam point as 373.2 uh, degree centigrade. And the next scale is the Rankine scale. So it is called as the degree foreign heat absolute scale. The Rankine scale is called as a degree foreign heat absolute scale and degree Kelvin is called as a degree centigrade absolute scale. OK, this uh, Rankine scale assigns the ice point as 491.7 and the steam point as 671.69 uh, accurately as a steam point. The next scale is the Raimur scale. So it is. it was also introduced nearly uh, when the Kelvin scale has been introduced 
nearly 1731 uh, in the year 1731 it was introduced and this scale Reimer scale will be assigning 0 degree Reimer as a ice point and around 80 degrees as a steam point. The, uh, this scale is popularly used in the alcohol industry. This Reimer scale is popularly used in the alcohol industry, in the beer manufacturing or some certain types of uh, uh, wines, whiskies like this manufacturing units. This scale is very, very popular, degree Reimer scale. Okay, these are the various temperature scales. I hope it is clear. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. The next one is the first one is the is among the expansion thermometers. There are three types of thermometer. One is a liquid expansion, solid expansion. Third one is vapor or gas expansion. So among that liquid expansion thermometer, the first uh, uh, this is the example that is mercury in glass uh, filled thermometer. Mercury in glass thermometers is called that is a liquid expansion thermometer. So mercury in glass thermometer is utilizes the volumetric or cubical expansion of liquid as a principle of its operation means the mercury which is there inside the bulb will be cubically or volumetrically expanding from its initial position while during its expansion. So this expansion will be read on the calibrated scale. That's the working principle or operating principle of this particular type of mercury in glass thermometer. So in a typical thermometer, a bulb will be there. So a bulb will be uh, enclosed in some envelope. So which contains mercury enclosed metal well. We will say this is a well. OK, this is a bulb and this will be connecting to this particular uh, calibrated scale or this uh, this thing using some thermal well. OK, inside this bulb there will be uh, what we say mercury liquid mercury will be filled. So the liquid mercury bulb as we have seen that is a primary element. OK, from this primary element this bulb will be inserted or immersed into the medium hot water medium or the in our mouth. OK, like this. OK, this will be this bulb will be in contact with the primary heat exchanger. That is our body from our body. The heat exchange is taking place. Then the inside uh, uh, um, the body temperature as the body temperature is higher uh, above the mercury temperature, the mercury will expand. So during this expansion, the expansion of this uh, displacement of this mercury from its initial position can be read down on a calibrated scale. OK, like this, this mercury will be expanding like this and we can read the reading. So this is the entire setup will be just immersed into some uh, type of thermal well. Thermal well is nothing but some protection instead of breaking that uh, bulb OK, at high temperatures or uh, due to the physical breakages or mechanical breakages to suppress that one. This bulb will be fixed into some uh, metal well like this that is called as a thermal well. So the range of this type of instrument is nearly minus 38 degree foreign heat to 950 degree foreign heat. It is the range of this instrument and its accuracy is usually higher. That is plus or minus one percentage of instrument span. So here the instrument span is nothing but uh, higher value minus lower value 950 plus into minus 38. So that's the span. So plus or minus one percentage of the span it will give. And what are the uses of this type of thermometer? So uses are in the open tanks containing liquids to measure the open tanks. Almost every industry will use mercury in glass thermometer. So it is very low cost. It is the robust in construction and everything. Then next is cooking kettles in the cooking kettles also in the industrial purpose. Then Montel metal baths, temperature measurement, steam lines, pipelines for fluid flow, air ducts and everything. We can use this mercury in glass built thermometer. Then other fluids can be used in place of this mercury like ethyl alcohol you can use and pentane you can use toluene you can use hydrocarbon compounds we can use instead of this mercury. Usually if you want to increase the range of this instrument so you can uh, change with some other fluid which is having a, um, a different expansion coefficient different um, um, boiling points or if you further want to increase that particular range of that instrument uh, the the free space above the mercury or free space above the liquid can be uh, suppressed with some inert gases. OK, so that the range can be increased so that it's uh, um, um, its displacement capacity can be easily increased. That's what the mercury in glass filled thermometer. The operating principle is nothing but cubical or volumetric expansion of a liquid is the operating principle. As soon as the primary element of the bulb uh, or the bulb uh, senses the heat outside the uh, medium, 
so that heat sensing that heat will be converted into the displacement of the mercury and mercury will result in the expansion so this expansion of the mercury or displacement from the initial position can be read down on the scale calibrated scale so that we can accurately read the different types of uh, temperatures of the medium okay is there any doubt is that clear no sir no sir yes then next is a uh, bimetallic thermometer okay shall i proceed or you want some break <laughs> we need actually some break sir like continuously okay. to hours yeah yeah continuous to hours i and i do understand that one for me also it's very difficult i have uh, uh, four classes in a stretch 1 2 3 4 hours yes sir 5 minutes okay. break uh, take a break uh, uh, when you are ready please let me know okay yes sir Sir, yes, yes. We are ready, sir. Okay, yeah. Okay, the next type of thermometer is a bimetallic thermometer. So usually the range of this thermometer is nearly minus forty degree Fahrenheit to eight hundred degree Fahrenheit, and the accuracy will be as same as this uh, uh, previous mercury in glass filled thermometer. That is one degree centigrade or one percentage of the instrument span. So what is the principle behind this operation? Is coefficient of thermal expansion of metals so different metals will have a different coefficient of thermal expansion so that coefficient of thermal expansion will be taking as a principle so they will be um, uh, fixing this two different metals which are having a two different thermal coefficient of expansion together in a form of helix okay like this a strip form or a helix form it will be just made this is called as strip form and this is called as a helix form okay this two different uh, metal solid metals will be just punched in a helix form of a stripped form 
and one end of this one will be permanently fastened and another one uh, another end of this per, uh, particular strip will be connected to the pointer which will be freely deflating on the circular uh, die okay so usually two different metals which are having two different thermal coefficient of expansion will be welded together in a form of helix or in a form of strip form so this is a strip form first one and this is called a helix form so one end of this helix or the strip will be uh, uh, permanently fastened using this thermal well and another one will uh, will be uh, freely open so that it will be connected to the pointer this pointer will be rotating on a circular die okay whenever uh, this strip okay permanently fastened strip is in contact with the temperature changing medium okay outside the medium so that temperature will be sensed by this uh, uh, solid material that helix type of material and it will be resulting in the expansion of low expansion metal low, low thermal coefficient of expansion uh, low uh, expansion metal like this so its expansion its deflection will be changing like this it will be deviating from its initial strip position to some other position or in the helix form it will be just rotating like this okay that uh, deflection will be causing so the change in deflection of this helix or this strip will be gauged by this particular pointer and this pointer will be in terms rotating on a uh, circular die then we can accurately read the reading of what is the reading of this uh, temperature of that particular medium so that's the uh, principle behind this operation of industrial scale bimetallic thermometer almost wherever we can use this uh, glass field thermometer mercury in glass field thermometer the uses will also be same for this particular type of uh, thermometer bimetallic thermometer so open tanks containing liquids cooking kettles molten metal baths and uh, steam uh, lines pipelines for fluid flow air ducts everything so usually for the low expansion metal we can use invar okay invar is nothing but an alloy of iron and nickel in which nickel will be nearly 36 percentage and for high expansion metal purpose we can use brass for the low temperature ranges for high temperature ranges we can use a high expansion metal as nickel alloys as a high expansion metal we can use for the high temperature ranges for low temperature ranges we can use a brass as the high expansion metal usually the low expansion metal will be the invar invar means an alloy of iron and nickel in which nickel percentage will be 36 percentage okay is that clear sir yes sir just in case if we use this biometallic thermometer in a temperature zone which has average of both the metals average of both the metals uh, average temperature for both the metals where both of them ni uh, neither of them bends then we can't uh, identify the temperature sir yes yes we can't identify that's what the temperature ranges will be fixed depending on the uh, particular low expansion and high expansion metal okay if so depending on the metal we take it to the uh, temperature zone what what uh, jeevan depending on the metals we use in the thermometer we take the range we choose the temperature zone yes yes temperature zone and range also fixed there usually this is the range minus 40 to 800 degree for a need Uh, depending on the temperature but this is not for one particular type of uh, bimetallic thermometer depending on the construction material we will choose the range in that range only it will be operated uh -huh. okay okay now it is clear okay. yes yes sir okay anybody okay i hope it is clear the next is a pressure spring thermometer in the pressure spring thermometer usually same there will be a bulb there will be a uh, the connection between the uh, uh, final element what we say this uh, functioning element functioning element is here a pointer okay to connect in between that functioning element and this bulb there will be a long capillary and armor will be there this long capillary and armor will be transmitting a displacement from bulb to the Uh, uh final controlling element so that is a pointer or the pressure spring so how this will be looking like so this construction capillary or this uh, pressure spring thermometer pressure spring type of instruments can be of three types one is a bordon tube type of instrument will be there or the spiral type of instrument will be there or the helix type of instrument will be there so the operating principle behind this uh, pressure spring thermometer will be the 
the pressure or vapor pressure of the gas is proportional to the temperature so here this is a gas expansion or vapor expansion thermometer as soon as this bulb inside fluid senses the outside temperature so this gas or the vapor will be expanding so this expansion of this particular fluid inside the bulb will be producing some displacement that displacement will be carried by this capillary and armor very long capillary and armor will be there usually this one so that displacement will be carried by this capillary and armor and it will be deflecting this pressure spring the pressure springs can be of three types one is a bordon tube type of pressure spring and the spiral type of pressure spring and helix type of pressure spring and as soon as this dip, uh, displacement gauged by this pressure spring so this pressure spring will be expanding or contracting depending on this expanding or contracting it will deflect the pointer and this pointer will be connected to the uh, calibrated scale so depending on the position of this pointer on the calibrated scale we can read the uh, reading of that particular temperature usually this will be looking like this so this uh, pressure spring will be connected to the pointer usually using some connector or some link and this pointer will be the pointer or we can call it as a pen arm and usually the circular chart or the calibrated chart will be there that is called as a scale so that scale on the scale this particular pointer will be operating to and fro so that we can determine the temperature so nothing a, a great difference in the liquid filled or the uh, liquid filled mercury in glass filled or solid filled or this vapor or gas filled the operating principle is almost same so first one will be the cubical expansion of the mercury second one will be the thermal expansion of that particular solid and third one will be the vapor pressure or pressure expansion of this particular vapor or gas filled thermometer whenever the gas or vapor are expanding so this expansion will be causing a deflection uh, deflection in the pressure spring so that deflection will be carried from the bulb to the pressure spring by the by using a capillary or armor and from this deflection it will be deflecting the pointer so this pointer will be moving on the calibrated scale so usually this uh, uh, deflecting medium or the uh, secondary elements called as a primary uh, pressure spring so this secondary elements will be of three types one is a bordon tube type and second one is a spherical uh, type of pressure springs and helical types of helix type of pressure springs so this is what the pressure spring thermometers okay usually the capillary in armor will be looking like this and this bulb okay this bulb instead of this is open so it will be uh, uh, protected using some thermal well so this is called as a thermal well some metallic sheets will be there so that the breakage cannot be happened easily so to protect that one there will be a thermal well like this and the arm uh, averaging capillary bulb or thermometer bulb so this bulb need not to be in the rectangular in the square it can be of capillary tube like type of bulb will also be there so this is a capillary type of bulb and thermometer capillary in armor this armor is there no it can be of a helix or it can be of strip type it can be of open type like this we can use many types of uh, capillaries and armors many types of bulbs can be there all this and instead of uh, open opening it to some external damages like a stress damage mechanical damage okay uh, high temperature damage to lower the damages there will be a metal well or metal sheets will be there so that we can put our bulb inside that particular metal sheets okay any doubt in this one pressure spring thermometers no sir okay then pneumatic balance pressure thermometer so in place of here if you see in this one capillary and armor will be there usually this is the delay time so okay here the temperature is something uh, 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 30 degrees centigrade for example let us say to transfer to convert the heat energy of the surrounding fluid to the bulb fluid expansion so this expansion has to be carried forward by this capillary in armor to the secondary element so during this transportation there is a much delay due to the long capillary in armor so in order to suppress this long capillary in armor or the deflection time lag to suppress this one there will be a bellows type of instrument will be there so this is called pneumatic balance pressure thermometer so this pressure thermometer in place of using this long capillary in armor very short capillary it will be replaced with a very short capillary usually this bulb will be uh, connected with the bellows bellows means like our lungs okay so it will be expanded and it will be contracted depending on the air supply inside and outside 
So this bellows type of uh, um, setup, usually this will be metallic bellows or rubber type of bellows, neoprene rubber bellows like this will be there, this one or metallic bellows will also be there like a shock absorbers like our lungs. OK, it is a clear replica of our lungs. Whenever we are inhaling, uh, inhaling uh, air to us, so lungs will be expanding. Whenever we are exhaling, the lungs will be uh, contracting like this. So same thing will be happening here. So this bellows will be connected to the bulb using some short capillary instead of using long armor and capillary there in the previous one. A short, very short length of capillary will be used here. And there will be a connecting nozzle so that an air pressure equivalent to the amount of this pressure to in order to counterbalance the pressure which is coming from the uh, bulb and pressure which is coming from the outline uh, outside to balance that one. There will be a air supply 20 PSIG. OK, pounds per square inch gauge 20 PSIG means 20 pounds per square inch gauge air supply from the external source will be there and whatever the balance pressure which is left OK uh, or the excess pressure which is there which will be thrown outside by the bleed nozzle and the uh, residual pressure or the balance pressure which is there after balancing this outside pressure and the inside pressure the left out pressure will be transmitted to the pressure receiver there this pressure receiver it will deflect the pointer and this pointer will be operated on the calibrated scale. So first of all, uh, the previous one, which is a pressure spring thermometer, there is a lag behind the transmission of this bulb temperature to the uh, secondary element due to the long, uh, uh, <coughs> long distance of this capillary and armor. In order to replace this long distance of capillary and armor or suppress this long distance of capillary and armor, there is a replacement of this particular bellows type of uh, uh, material. And this bellows type of material will be connected to the bulb material using a short length of a capillary. The, this is called as a transmitter. Okay, this transmitter. Whenever there is expansion, whenever there is a heat energy which is supplied outside this bulb, so the inside material, inside the fluid will be expanded. So this expansion will be producing a deflection in the capillary and this expanded vapor or gas will be expanding this bellows, bellows type of material. Whenever it is expanding, so this wall control nozzle is there. It will be deflecting from its initial position in order to counterbalance this expansion pressure. There is a uh, external uh, supply of the pressure will be there nearly 20 PSIG air supply will be there after counterbalancing each other. The residual pressure will be letting uh, uh, letting to go into the pressure receiver there in the pressure receiver. The deflection will be uh, causing a uh, movement of this pointer. As soon as this moment of pointer is causing that will be read on the calibrated scale which is rotating inside the pointer is rotating. If there is excess pressure which cannot be balanced inside in the transmitter, so that will be let out uh, using the bleed nozzle. So the advantage of this type of pneumatic balance pressure thermometer is short length of capillary between bulb and a transmitter. Whereas in the previous case, very long length of bulb and this is the receiver pressure spring is a receiver here or a transmitter here. OK, this is a transmitter here between the bulb and transmitter. There is a very long length of capillary and armor is there that can be suppressed using this pneumatic balance pressure thermometer. So short length of capillary between bulb and the transmitter and costly armors and capillary are very, very costly. OK, here the capillary, a simple copper tubing is used. That's the advantage. Costly armor and capillary are replaced by ordinary copper tubing and no ambient temperature compensation is required means the outside temperature will not influence the inside readings ambient temperatures then increase the speed of response due to short length of capillary. The speed of response will be very high due to this length of uh, capillary between bulb and transmitter, whereas the length of uh, uh, this capillary in armor is very high due to this. The speed of response of the thermometer is very, very low compared to the pneumatic balance uh, pressure thermometer and decrease the dead zones. OK, dead zones we already explained. So uh, that if you give the input, the, there is no continuous output for that reading until some threshold limit has been achieved. So the decrease of dead zones will be there in the pneumatic balance pressure thermometer. And there are certainly the disadvantages for any instrument. No matter how good we are constructing that one, there will be a disadvantage. That is high maintenance and service required and barometric pressures are not negligible at low pressures. So that one, I hope it is clear. Yes, sir. It is clear. Okay, time is very high. Time is very high. Yes, yes sir, thank you for listening. Sorry for wasting your time. No, 